Hi guys and welcome to my video. This is my Fab Fit Fun edit sale research video. Basically what I do in this video is I find every single item in a Fab Fit Fun ad order edit sale. For this it is our spring 2020 edit sale and I read as many reviews as my brain can read and I look at ingredients and then I check the prices that I find that particular product for on Google Shopping. So there's a bunch of prices available and I just check all of them to make sure that FabFitFun is the lowest price. I then take all of that information, put it in a ginormous document, and then I read that document on camera and edit a video out of it. Usually it is, in the past it's been one video and it's usually like an hour long or 40 minutes long or something pretty crazy. I try to break it as down as much as possible. This time I'm trying something different and I'm gonna do it by category. So each video is going to be its own category. They're all gonna have this same intro so you're gonna hear this little spiel every single time. And then it'll go into whatever that video's category is. So the five categories are bath and body, cosmetics, hair care, skin care. And then I'm gonna have a fifth video. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna put in that video. As always, I do not review any of the bundles because they usually contain multiple brands and most of those brands are in the edit sale anyways. I don't review anything that is your personal taste such as clothing or jewelry or home decor because the reviews on that are gonna just be based on what people like or don't like, and everybody likes different things. And I don't review anything that is a FabFitFun in-house brand. So that's Ish, Exo Sienna, Summer and Rose, Chic and Tonic. I don't review any of those things because there's usually not enough reviews out there and you can only really find them on that one site, which is the FabFitFun in-house site. Another thing that I'm gonna do a little bit different this time is normally I say, here's the price, here's the lowest price, here's where I found it, and this time I feel like I'm just gonna cut all of that out and type it. So it's gonna be next to the photo if it exists. If the only price I found is retail price, you won't even see a price up there. It will be posted and then the site will be listed underneath if for some reason it is lower than the FabFitFun price, I'll put like a little warning or make it a different color or something like that just to let you know. And then that link to where I found the lower price will be down in the description. Everything is in alphabetical order, A through Z, but by company, not by product. So if I have a Hava blue serum and a Hava green serum, green might be before blue. I didn't really organize it in that way, so that would be alphabetical, but all of a Hava would be at the beginning of the video with the A's. That's the end of the intro, and now to the products. This is the fourth category. It's also gonna be the longest video. The reason it's gonna be longer is because I also try to cover ingredients in the skincare group. So this one will definitely be longer than the other ones. It also might be my last video, just because I don't know if I'll have time to do the fifth video, at least not for select members. The first company is 10 Degrees Cooler, and this is their eye serum, number 707. Could not find enough reviews on that. For the ingredients, it does have cactus or prickly pear, so really good ingredient actually. And it contains pure oils, so everything is just pure oils in that one. And for the 10 Degrees Cooler 03, Midnight in Corsica, also could not find enough reviews for that one. Again, a mixture of several oils. This one has marula oil, jojoba oil, safflower seed. It also has French lavender. Then we have the 111 Skin Lip Pen. Could not find enough reviews for that. This is a two-step program. So there's a mask and then there's a balm. The mask has a lot of hydrating ingredients. It includes peptides, has some citrus as strats and oils though. And the balm contains beeswax in addition to some hydrating oil. For the 111 Skin Reparative Kit, could not find enough reviews on that. Some pretty good ingredients in there. Some of them are citrus extracts though. It has that grapefruit extract in there. And it has moringa seed, rosemary, ashwagandha. I really like all of those. Next, we have the 111 Skin Sub-Zero Depuffing Eye Mask. This is a 4.8 star rating with 33 reviews. Most of them are positive, obviously, by it being as high as 4.8. They say it has a cooling feeling, it does what it says, and that long-term it works on depuffing your under eyes. These are not fragrance-free, though, and if you have very sensitive skin, I wouldn't recommend fragrance putting on your skin and especially not putting it on your eye area. 
Then we have the APTO Skincare Equalizing Gel and Mask Duo. This one I could not find enough reviews. It is water-based and it's made with seaweed and aloe, which are both pretty soothing. For the APTO Skincare Spirulina Mask, this is a four-star rating with 54,513 reviews. Has so many because it was in a beauty box. They saw a difference, but the negatives were about the application process and removing it. I guess it's a difficult mask to remove and also the texture while it's on. For the Avatera Foam Mask Set, there were not enough reviews. These are based in water. They also have Kaolin Clay and this comes with nine foaming masks. For the Avatera Let's Face It Mask, also couldn't find enough reviews. This one's a mask set that has different masks. So it has six regular and then three foaming masks. For the Obvious Skincare Night Moisturizer, could not find enough reviews. This has some retinol ingredients and it has beta carotene. It's good for cell turnover, exfoliation, anti-aging. For the Better Skin Co. Better Skin Super Shield, could not find enough reviews on that one either. This has a water, glycerin, and aloe base, which is nice. It does have some caffeine ingredients like green tea and black tree. It also has turmeric, which is an ingredient that helps protect and repair your skin. For the Bios Apothecary Morning Glory Brightening Serum, not enough reviews on that either. This one has sweet almond oil and coconut oil. I don't really like putting it on my face, but it doesn't mean it's bad for all faces. And this has several fruit and plant extracts as well. For the Bios Apothecary Passion Fruit Enzyme Mask, again, couldn't find enough reviews. This one is aloe-based. It has fruit extracts that are known to eat dead skin off of your face, slow, like kiwi and pineapple. So it has a lot of fruit extract ingredients if you have any allergens. And it has alpha hydroxy acids as well, so this is not the best for someone with really sensitive skin. For the Bios Apothecary Rosehip Face Serum, could not find enough reviews on that product. This one is based in olive and coconut oil. Again, if you're sensitive to coconut oil, if that makes you break out, probably avoid this this one and it has a plant-based formulation so a lot of the ingredients are all plant-based. Then we have the Bios Apothecary Tea Tree Blemish Tincture. Again not enough reviews on this either. This one has witch hazel which is an astringent and aloe leaf which soothes. It has willow bark and tea tree so those are both known for being really good for acne. Next we have the Samoa Refreshing Papaya and Strawberry Seed Scrub Facial Mask. This one had a 4.2 star rating 49 total, but it includes all the masks by this type of brand, so I couldn't actually separate it out. A lot of the negatives were that the bottle size is too small, the main complaint is that the texture is weird, but um, also people said that it didn't really smell like papaya or strawberry, but the positives say that it was still refreshing, that their skin did get exfoliated. This is basically a sugar scrub. It looks like it is full of fruit extracts as well, so if you have any fruit allergies, of course, check that ingredient list, and the formulation is organic. Next we have the Dermalek Lipo Contour Body Cream Toning Cream. I'm not sure why they put this one in the skincare category instead of in the bath and body, but this one has a 4.3 star rating with 17 reviews. Most noticed a difference and some said that it was pretty quickly, like a week, three days, two weeks. Others said they saw absolutely nothing after continued use, so I guess you have kind of both of them there. This product uses silicones, so a lot of the times when they use silicones, it's kind of just like masking it. It's not necessarily improving your skin texture, but it does have caffeine, which does normally improve skin texture. Next, we have the Dermalek Revitalite Professional Eyelid and Dark Circle Corrector. This had a 4.2 star rating with 50 reviewers. The reviews go back and forth, so some of them say it works, some of them say it doesn't. It's mostly positive. There are a lot saying that it doesn't work, though. This is water-based. It has peptides in it for eye aging, so it kind of helps anti-aging of your eye area. It also has silicones that kind of fill pores and make skin look even when you're not wearing it. Next, we have the Dermovia Lace Face Binge Mask Bundle. This one did not have very many reviews. It had the peel off mask. So what you do is you actually put the mask on your face, then you attach this like silk contraption over your face and then you peel it off with that kind of mask. It's kind of hard to explain. All three are water-based. They do contain some ingredients that I wouldn't recommend for sensitive skin, like citric acid, for example. And then the charcoal mask has fragrance up there pretty high, which I don't understand why it needs to for being a mask that you leave on your face that long. The next product is the Double Dare OMG Peeling Gel. This one has a 4.3 star rating with 18 reviews, mostly positive. They do say it heats up or it feels like it heats up. So some people were not sure if it would be good for 
sensitive skin, but it didn't seem like anyone said it affected their skin. Then we have the Dr. Brandt Skincare 3D Lip Plump Fix. This is a 3.5 star rating with 157 reviews. The positives, it, it's two-sided. There's an AM side and a PM side. So the positives are all about the AM side, saying that it works, that they could see a difference. It's a mild difference, but everybody was saying like, I really like the AM formula. And the negatives were about the PM side, saying it was absolutely useless, or it wouldn't come out of the tube, or it felt weird on their lips, like it felt like putting like a thick cream or sunscreen on their lips. The AM side uses moringa oil and silicone and glycerin. It also has coconut oil, which I mention on here that I don't put on my face, but I do like to put it on my lips. I do think it's hydrating for the skin on my lips. The lip conditioner, it's supposed to be the PM side. It's supposed to be nourishing, but mostly looks like it just has silicones listed pretty high up there. And it's not really a nourishing ingredient. It just kind of sits on top of your lip and lets you not lose moisture. So I'm not sure. It does also contain wax, which does sort of the same thing, just sits on your lips instead of actually getting any nutrients into your lips to hydrate it. Next, we have the Dr. Brandt Skincare Mattifying Hydrating Pore Minimizer Gel. This has a four star rating with 67 reviews. A lot of people said it works as a mattifier and a primer, but it doesn't really moisturize and hydrate, which it says in its name, Hydrating Pore Minimizer. The base for this is a mix of water and silicone, so that may be the reason why they're saying it's not hydrating if they're used to something that is, doesn't have silicone. Then we have the Dr. Brandt Skincare Pore No More Pore Purifying Cleanser. This is a 4.4 star rating with 20 reviews, and the reviewer said that it was gentle and that it actually does work to clear out your pores and remove that dirt. This one has salicylic acid and tea tree, so both of those are to treat acne, and it's fragrance-free, which I like. Then we have the Dr. Brandt Skincare Magnetite. This had a 4.2 star rating with 2,669 reviewers. So you put this mask on your face and then you use a magnet to remove the mask, and it leaves kind of like a liquid on your face, which you rub in. A lot of people said that they thought that that was oil. Some people said, hey, this has a lot of silicones in the ingredients. All it's leaving on my face is silicone. So if you're really avoiding silicone, obviously this wouldn't be for you. And the positives were about the experience and how the mask is different, like doing a magnetic mask is different than any other masking they've done. It does have several silicones, like they said. It has plant oils like lavender and chamomile as well. So it could be a mixture of that that gets left on your skin. Then we have the Erno Laszlo Hydrotherapy Memory Sleep Mask. This one has a 4.6 star rating with 322 reviews. The positive said it helped with even hydration, but the negatives were about silicone being the second ingredient or that it was stripping over skin's time and then four different reviewers said that it's not good for dry skin. This does have silicone and coconut oil. Those are two ingredients that can cause people to break out. Personally, both of those ingredients cause me to break out, but that doesn't mean it does that for everyone. It also has citric acid and tomato leaf extract, which I think is a lot for sensitive skin. Then we have the Frank Body Glow Mask. This is a 4.8 star rating with 283 reviews. They were all pretty positive. There wasn't really any trends there. And then coffee seed oil. So I love caffeine for my face. That's where it has. And shea butter and cocoa butters. So those are really like moisturizing. And then antioxidants from the goji berry. Next is the Guyon by Neon and Co Serum A. This didn't have enough reviews. It's water, glycerin, and castor oil base. It does have a lot of vitamins. It has sodium hyaluronate, which is basically like the hyaluronic acid that can be absorbed by our skin. It has fruit extracts, but those are really low on the list. They're even listed after preservatives and perfumes, so I don't really know how much it has in there. The next product is Georgette Clinger Vitamin C Cleansing Gel. This has a 4.2 star rating with 312 reviewers. They say it's gentle, it's still good at removing makeup. Some say it caused the breakouts though. It does have a lot of fruit extracts as in exfoli exfoliants in this product. Our next product is Grown Alchemist Cleansing Mask Wheat Germ Ginkgo Cranberry, and this one is 4.5 star rating with 11 reviews. The reviews say it's deep cleaning. It works to make skin feel extra clean. It's formulated with several oils and extracts including aloe, rose, mandarin, and sweet orange. And then for the Grown Alchemist Instant Smoothing Serum Trihyaluronin Complex. I don't know if I said that right. This one did not have very many reviews. It's based in water and sodium hyaluronate, which is a hyaluronic acid. For the Grown Alchemist Polishing Facial Exfoliant, this has 4.5 star rating with 392 reviewers. Positives claim that it is gentle exfoliates and you can use it daily. Negatives were mostly about the scent. This is an aloe-based product, which means it's probably very soothing. This one does contain 
contain lactic acid, but I think that one is the one that's like the most okay for sensitive skin of all the AHAs. I'm more worried about the citrus oils. It has orange and grapefruit oil. It also has peppermint oil. I feel like those might be too much for sensitive skin. For our next product, we have the Hand Skin Glass Skin Set. I could not find this as a set, but I did find some of the products separately. The Essence has good reviews for hydrating. It's 4.7 stars with 82 reviews. The Moisture Cream has 4.6 stars with 42 reviews. They say it works really well for dry skin. Looking at the ingredients for all the products, it's really full of a lot of silicones, which might be why it works so well for dry skin, but I actually, I wouldn't recommend something that is that full of silicones. Next, we have the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Facial Oil. Could not find enough reviews on this one. Rice oil is actually my favorite oil to use. It's one of the reasons why Tatcha is one of my favorite skincare brands. This product actually contains seven total oils. It says it's 95% natural ingredients. It does have coconut oil, but in the form that doesn't clog my pores. And avoid if you're allergic to lavender because it also contains lavender. Then we have the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Hyaluronic Cream. This one also did not have very many reviews. This one contains rice extract. They also list hyaluronic acid, which can't actually penetrate the skin. It's not made at a molecular weight that can penetrate the skin, but they claim to use an absorption technology. I don't really know what that means. Next, we have the Hey Honey Morning Silk Serum. 4.8 star rating, 853 reviewers. Reviews are about it working. They were all pretty good. The negatives were that you don't get much product for the price. That was kind of the only negative really. This one has a lot of silicones in it, so if that makes you break out, I would avoid it. It has some pretty good ingredients. It has honey, sodium hyaluronate, and a lot of vitamins as its main nourishing ingredients. Next, we have the Hikari Starstruck and Star Cluster Peel-Off Face Mask. This one did not have enough reviews either, and it uses lithium magnesium sodium silicate clay as its kind of like pore cleansingness. Next, we have the Hanua Aloha Youth Serum. I'm sorry if I messed that name up. Could not find enough reviews on that. It has several plant-derived oils, including Bakuchiol seed oil, and I'm probably saying that one wrong. I have been no clue, but I did look it up and that one is an alternative to retinol. So it's like a natural alternative to retinol. Next, we have Hanua Skincare Hawaiian Beauty Water. Again, don't know if I said that name right. This one had 4.9 star ratings with 11 reviews. Rave reviews pretty much. Three different trends there, anti-aging skin, brightening, and exfoliating. It uses papaya and hibiscus enzymes to exfoliate, which I think is kind of cool. Next, we have the Ilia Balmy Days Lip Conditioner and Balmy Nights Lip Exfoliator. I could not find those sold together, only separately. Overall, they did have good reviews though. 4.8 star and 4.7 star, only four and five stars for the balm. For the exfoliator, there was a lot that were low ratings that said it was uncomfortable. If you get more, they would like prefer to have a sugar scrub than this balm scrub. Next for Immunicology Face Serum, that one did not have enough reviews. It has a mixture of oils and clays and it's a dry face oil. For the Immunicology Night Protection Cream, also not enough reviews. This is a mixture of oils, vitamin E, also has clay in this one as well. For the Immunocology Super 7 Elixir, again, not enough reviews. This one has snail mucin, which is basically snail secretion. It also has three clays, montemorillonite, illite, and acoline. So those are probably for purifying your pores, and I'm sure I butchered them all, which I always do, but I'm doing my best, guys. Then we have the Immunocology Vital Clay, also not enough reviews. Three types of clay in this one as well. This one's also fortified with minerals. Then we have the J. Nicole Overdose Face Serum, not enough reviews. This is kind of cool though because 10% of their sales go to children affected by addiction. So that's kind of nice that they're supporting a cause with their business. It has niacinamide, retinol, azelaic acid, which is a really good acid that's like a gentle leave-on exfoliant. Also has lactic acid, which is another one of those that's really good for scarring. Definitely both, both more gentle than glycolic acids but it also contains silicones. And for the Habonaria Maria Nella Midnight Youth Potion, not enough reviews on that. This has hyaluronic acid, several oils. It also has an effective stabilized vitamin C ingredient and niacinamides and coconut oil, and they say they're 99% natural. Then we have the Julep Dream Big Pressed Night Serum with BHA. This has a 3.8 star rating with 14 reviews. It says it's good for travel because it's not liquid and it's easy to apply. The negatives are that you don't get much product and that it can leave a greasy feel and it takes a Long time to absorb that greasy feel. This product has
has a lot of silicones actually, which is why I think it, they're saying that it takes a long time to absorb. Also has a mineral oil-based wax. It also contains ingredient polyethylene, which is basically plastic, and I don't even think that is absorbable, absorbed at all. Next, we have the Kalos Triple Threat Detox Mask. This has a 4.8 star rating with 544 reviewers. It's 5% glycolic, so that is kind of a strong acid. If you um, have sensitive skin, I wouldn't get this one. It also has hyaluronic acid, and it's a botanical form, which is kind of cool. It has green tea and a lot of extracts. There are definitely ingredients that I would avoid if I had sensitive skin, but because I don't, I would probably get this product. The only thing that I would not want is maybe the coconut oil. Then we have the Cat Berkey Foam Control Marine Collagen Gel, 4.5 star rating, 39 reviews. They say it soothes, it's quick, it's very hydrating, feels luxurious. The negatives are mostly about the scent. The ingredients list is really long. Overall, from a scan, it looks pretty clean. They do have some preservatives that could be irritants, but mostly those would be irritants for really sensitive skin, nothing else. It's listed at the end, and they are paraben-free preservatives. I would also avoid this, though, if you're allergic to lavender, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. Then we have the Kat Berkey KBS Calming Gel Cleanser. Not enough reviews on this one. This one has Arnica Montana water, which is its first ingredient, and that's really good at repairing tissue, so I really like that that is the first ingredient. Lavender's pretty high up there too, but it's lavender water, not oil. Aloe's there too, soothing, has red clover, which is great antioxidant. I really like these ingredients, and Cat Berkey is actually known for cold pressing process, so they don't actually heat the ingredients. So you get a lot more out of the product because you're not heating those ingredients. The next one is the Kat Berkey Rosehip Revitalizing Face Serum. This has a 4.1 star rating with 14 reviews, has great reviews except a few about the oily smell, I'm not 100% sure what that means, and that the product is too expensive, but we're getting it at a discount here. So This uses sodium ascorbyl phosphate as its vitamin C, and I know I probably butchered that, but this is one of the most stable forms of vitamin C. Next we have Kate Somerville Exfoliate Cleanser Daily Foam Wash, 4.6 star rating, 2,686 reviews. This one's not for sensitive skin, according to the reviewers. It's good for acne though, less gentle than other cleansers though. So if you're used to the other Kate Somerville cleansers, people were saying this one is way less gentle than those. This has pumpkin fruit, which is like a pretty good exfoliant. It also has aloe, which is soothing. It has lactic and glycolic acids, which is probably why people were saying it's not good for sensitive skin for that glycolic acid there. Then we have the Kate Somerville Exfoliate Intensive Exfoliating Treatment. This one has a 4.4 star rating with 9,805 reviews mostly positive with some having reactions to the product saying that it was causing burning or irritation. This also has lactic acid, it has papaya fruit, it has pumpkin extract, it has honey and lavender and aloe, which are calming, but any of the reactions could be to one of the first ingredients I mentioned. For the Clay Beauty Super Greens and Lavender Clarifying Green Clay Mask, this did not have enough reviews. It's a powder though. You add it from powder form to water, then it makes the paste, and that's how you make the mask. So it will probably have a longer shelf life or like last longer than other masks. It's a simple ingredient list. It really only has six ingredients, two different types of clay, spinach, alfalfa, aloe, and lavender powders. So I guess I would avoid it if I was allergic to lavender, but otherwise I think that's really nice that it has like a clean list of ingredients. Then we have the Coco Star Watermelon Sheet Mask. This one has a 4.3 star rating with 78 reviews. People liked it because they're just like small circle masks instead of one huge full face mask. So you could use it as spot treatment or you could put the circles all over. Kind of gives you like the ability to do whatever you want with it. For the Coors Black Pine Sleeping Mask, this one has a 4.6 star rating with 261 reviewers. It says great for moisturizing. People are loving the scent. Also negatives include that it's not really firming or that they didn't really like the price. This one's pretty coconut oil heavy, so I think I saw two or three maybe coconut oil ingredients in there. So if you have a reaction to that, I probably wouldn't get it. Then we have the Coors Greek Yogurt Cleansing Wipes. This is a 4.2 star rating with 46 reviews. Very soft feeling, according to people, good for sensitive skin. It works at removing your makeup. Negatives were the scent and that they are expensive for how many you get. Moving on to the Leland Francis Luxe Face Oil, five star rating, 11 reviewers, no real trends, just everybody saying it's good. All the ingredients in here are oils and vitamins. Right, same thing for the Leland Francis 29 Botanical Serum. This one didn't have enough reviews, but again, all the ingredients are oils and vitamins. For the Light Stim for Acne has a 4.6 star rating with 50 reviews. The great reviews were about it working, but many said that it was really time consuming, so they probably wouldn't 
keep up with it. And there were similar reviews for the light sim for wrinkles, 4.3 star rating, 87 reviews. This one had less saying that it worked. Like definitely some of them said, this is only gonna do a light reduction in your wrinkles. It's not gonna really do something for like real wrinkles. But the negatives are that it was time consuming as well and that they had to spend like 30 or more minutes a day. For the Lily Plum Elixir, 4.9 star rating with 12 reviews, nothing negative in the responses there. For the Mint Pear Calm Facial Toner, not enough reviews. This one has aloe juice as its main ingredient, which I love, and has some nice oils like chamomile, which is calming, and tea tree, which is clearing. It also has lavender though, so again, if you're allergic to lavender, avoid this one. For the Mud Masky After Mask Vitamin Serum, 4.5 star ratings, 1,347 reviews. This has both positive and negative reviews, kind of mixed. They lean a positive overall, but definitely mixed. It's water-based, but it also has coconut oil. For the Mud Masky Sleep Repair Mask, this is a four star rating with 28,172 reviews. I, people said they noticed a brighter, reviewers said they noticed a brighter complexion, only need a small amount, it absorbs pretty quickly. The negatives are that it's sticky and it's odd to wear a clay mask to bed. It does have clay in it, but the first ingredients are not clay, like water, glycerin, also has coconut oil, wa rose water, shea butter. So I'm kind of confused as why people were saying like it's weird to wear a clay mask to bed. Maybe it has the texture of a clay mask, I can't. For the Murad Hydrating Toner, that's a 4.5 star rating with 516 reviews. Most people like that it's not harsh, but the negatives are that the scent is really strong. This is alcohol free, but it uses witch hazel water, so some people avoid witch hazel too because they don't like it. Fruit extracts and vitamins. For the Murad Prebiotic 3-in-1 Multi Mist, 4.7 star rating, 352 reviewers, mostly positive, a few mentioning that it caused them to break out, but those were very few. It does contain silicones and those do cause some skins to break out, so maybe that's why that's being mentioned. For the Nui Body Hydrate Moisturizing Facial Serum, not enough reviews on this one. It has four organic ingredients, pumpkin seed oil, almond oil, lavender oil, and vitamin E. For the No BS Vitamin C Serum, 4.4 star rating with 173 reviews. The reviewer said that it's not for sensitive skin and that it has like a bright orange color to it. That is kind of something that I thought was a little off. This vitamin C in this product is ascorbic acid. It's usually really effective, stable form of vitamin C, but when it stops being stable, when it oxidizes, it actually turns orange in color. So I'm not sure if the way they're shipping it out makes it turn orange or if they're purposely turning orange so you don't know when it goes bad. I'm not 100% sure, but it kind of makes me a little bit suspicious. Next is the non-gender specific everything serum. This has a 4.6 star rating with 14 reviews. All of them are good reviews except one that had an allergic reaction. It has coconut oil, hops, and sodium hyaluronate, which is the absorbable form of hyaluronic acid. So then we have the Audacite, I think that's how you say it, BA underscore S eye contour serum roller. This one has a 4.7 star rating with 151 reviews. It says it's good for sensitive skin, no stinging, no reaction. Most said it was great, brightener, moisturizer. Negative is the price, and some say that it didn't work for wrinkles. Overall, the ingredient list is pretty clean. It does have lavender listed twice, also has citrus. So again, if you're sensitive to that, interesting that reviewers were saying that it's good for sensitive skin because usually when something has citrus all in it, it's not the best for sensitive skin. For the Ollie Organic Anti-Aging Intelligence Facial Serum, not enough reviews on that. Then the Olysia Beauty Pearl Activating Elixir, not enough reviews for that. I actually like products like this that come in pearl form, so when you pump them, it breaks the pearl, and then the ingredients activate. So it's actually really good at keeping your ingredients active longer. My favorite vitamin C serum does the same thing. This one is full of growth factors, several actually. Peptides, marine algae, it also contains citric acid. For the Orlane Superdose Hyaluronic Acid Serum, not enough reviews for that. It's water-based, it has sodium hyaluronate and hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid won't actually do anything because it can't penetrate in your skin. Its molecular weight is too big, it's just gonna sit on top, but it does have sodium hyaluronate which would penetrate your skin. I just think it's interesting they put both. For the Orlane Superdose Collagen, this one has a 2.6 star rating with 10 reviews. And three said it was really hydrating, but most had issues with having no results, it being hard to use, or it causing irritation. For the Pistache Skincare pistachio rose divine oil not enough reviews on that it's full of multiple oils including sweet almond grape seed pistachio kind of cool for the pearlies coconut and rice nourishing treatment sheet mask this one not enough reviews on that it is on ipsy but as a set so the reviews were for both so i decided not to use those reviews based on the name obviously this one has rice it has rice extract and it does have coconut as the last ingredient for the pearlies matcha green tea antioxidant mask this one has a 
a 94% rating. It's in percent. It has 19,879 reviews. Pretty much positive. There wasn't really to go by there, just like people saying that they like it. For the Ramona Klein Peach Wine Moisturizer, it has a five-star rating with 19 reviews. People say it's moisturizing, intense, absorbs well. Shea butter and glycerin in the ingredients. It is water-based. It contains coconut oil ingredients as well, so if that causes you to break out, just think about that. And then we have the Ramona Klein Vitamin B Serum. Not enough reviews on this one. Main ingredients that I saw were like water, witch hazel, which is an astringent, and then also contains honey, which is supposed to be really good for acne and inflammation. For the Reviva Roller Reviva Gel Booster Combo, 4.1 star rating with 15 reviews. The positives are about being lightweight, but this has had pretty mixed reviews in those 15 reviews. For the Sem Urban Eco Warath Eye Cream, I really hope I said that even close to right. 4.1 star rating with 14 reviews, mostly positive. The negatives were just about the fragrance being a little too much. For the Sam Urban Echo Warath Toner, again, same ingredient. This one has a 4.6 star rating with 23 reviewers. Positives were that it was moisturizing, it left your skin feeling really soft. And this one, again, the negatives were about the fragrance being too strong. Then we have the Skin & Co. Roma Truffle Therapy Eye Concentrate, 4.3 star rating, 76 reviews. Most of the reviews said it's not for sensitive skin. They felt burning, itching, irritation. There's a lot of reviews so that it works and it's creamy and luxurious, so I wouldn't like completely go off of those, but there were enough that I had to bring it up. For the Skin and Lab Red Cream, this has a 4.6 star rating with 136 reviews. It's described as jasmine, light floral scent. Both oily and dry skin users were saying positives. Oily was saying it's helping with acne and balancing the oil in their skin. And then dry skin was saying that it's super moisturizing. This product is water-based. It also does contain silicone, so if you're avoiding that, again, this one has them. Also several good extracts and ingredients as well though. For the Skin and Lab Red Serum, very similar, 4.6 star rating. Mostly positive, many saying that they saw results for adult acne, for brightening, and for sun damage. This has clay, shea butter, glycerin, it has calamine too, which is calming. For the Skin Forum Peeling So Good 7 Day Pack in Berry, not enough reviews on that. This has strawberry, raspberry, and blueberry fruit extracts in it. For the Skin Forum Peeling So Good 7 Pack in Herb, also not enough reviews. This one has a lot of citrus extracts. It also has lavender and peppermint. So again, if you have sensitive skin, this one's probably not for you. For that Snow Anti-Aging Lip Treatment, it has five star rating with 11 reviews. This is on the company website. I don't always trust five star ratings when they're on custom company websites, but Revestrol is a grape extract actually. This product also has hyaluronic acid in it. It listed as hyaluronic acid, which like I said before, sits on the top of your skin, doesn't actually penetrate your skin. And it has green tea, which is great for caffeine. It has chamomile, which is calming, and shea butter, which is moisturizing. For the Snow Lavender and Mint Lip Scrub, five star rating, 12 reviewers, again on the company's website, so I don't know, take that with a grain of salt. For the Snow Fox Skin Care Cucumber Recovery Serum, there were not enough reviews on that. It's probably soothing from the cucumber, aloe, and lavender oil, as long as you're not allergic to lavender oil. For the Sonage Sea Shield Smart Serum, not enough reviews on that one either. It has three types of vitamin C, including one that is pretty effective. It's used in like most skincare, which is ascorbic acid. For the Sonage Harmony Glycopolymer Solution, 4.9 star rating with 35 reviewers. This is excellent toner for sensitive skin. They say it works for redness. Pretty much only four and five star reviews on this one. For the Sonage Palm Crush Detox Enzyme Mask, not enough reviews on that. It has bromelain, which is like from pineapples. It's pineapple enzymes. Also has pumpkin, also has papaya enzymes. For the Style Fox Beauty Magic Matcha Mask, not enough reviews on this one either, but I love that the ingredients are pretty simple. It has a bunch of clays, it has caffeine, like matcha, and green tea as well. And for the Style Fox Super Beauty Greens Mask, again, not enough reviews. And again, really simple ingredients, just clay, spirulina, hemp, and several fruit and vegetable ingredients, like kind of a green smoothie, but for your skin. For Style Fox Beauty Sweet Dreams Mask, not enough reviews on this one either. This one also has clays. It has soothing oatmeal, which is good. It has lavender, which unless you're allergic is pretty good. And it has chamomile, which again is soothing. For the Super Mood Youth Glow Baby Face Mask, not enough reviews on that one. It is a water, glycerin, and clay base full of a lot of oils and extracts. For Terramere Cosmetics Rose Water and Aloe Toner, not enough reviews on this one either. Aloe, rose, vegetable glycerin, some preservatives in it. Aloe is known to be really soothing and help your skin heal. For the Terramere Jojoba Bead Clarifying Facial Exfoliant, not enough reviews on this one either. This one is aloe and palm oil base. If you wanna see my thoughts on palm oil, you can go ahead and check out that video I mentioned earlier. 
For the This Works Evening Detox Clay Mask, this is a 4.5 star rating with 81 reviews. It's good and soothing, people say. It's brightening. Some people say the peppermint makes it tingle, which people like and other people don't like. The only thing I really didn't like about this one is that it contains a petroleum-based wax ingredient, so it's not really clean beauty approved. It does have sea salt, citrus acids in it as well, and menthol as well, so again, avoid if you have sensitive skin. For the Unpa Cosmetics Charcoal Cleansing Foam Gommage, not enough reviews on that, but the gommage is a 10% charcoal formula. For the Urban Skin RX Revitalize is a 4.5 star rating with 193 reviews. Majority say that they saw a difference after use. It's interesting, the front of the bottle says plus C, but then when I look at the ingredients list, I didn't see any ingredients that would be vitamin C. So I'm not 100% sure about that. Maybe I'm missing it, um, but I did see vitamin K in there, so. I don't know. For the Urban Skin RX Pumpkin Mask, this one has a 4.6 star rating with 125 reviews. Positives are about the scent, that it smells like pumpkin and gingerbread, which sounds amazing to me. It's, pumpkin is one of my favorite scents. They also said wearing the mask has made a difference, that they have very few negatives about it, but the few that were about it were about it heating up or heating up too much or leaving your skin feeling a little bit oily. This is a detox mask and it has two types of clay and it also has pineapple enzymes which are good at cleaning out that dead skin off of your face. For the Vegamore Pure Marula Oil, not enough reviews on that. This one is 100% Marula Oil which is an antioxidant rich, it's moisturizing, it works really good for sensitive and acne skin if you fall into one of those categories. For the Wish Beauty Frosted Lip Hair Treatment Set, couldn't find enough reviews on that. The balm is wax free which I really like. The scrub is not, but it doesn't stay on your lips that long, so this is definitely a product I would probably buy. The lip balm looks like it has some really good ingredients that will actually hydrate your lips. So one of the reasons I don't like wax for your lips is it sits on top of your lips. It doesn't actually hydrate them, so you only get like short-term relief. But this one has ingredients like shea butter, avocado oil, vitamin E. Those will actually penetrate your lips and will hydrate them from within so you can have healthier lips overall. For the Wish Formula Bubble Duo, not enough reviews on that. This does use acid like lactic acid and glycolic acid, so if you avoid those, then you would probably avoid this one. And the last item is the Zoe Ayala Dalmatian Jasper Roller, and I could not find enough reviews on this one. Also, this obviously doesn't have ingredients to go over. This is the last video. If you have any feedback of how this new format worked out, is this better? Is it worse? Do you just want one huge video? Let me know so I can keep making these videos better. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.